Attention all seekers of wisdom and prosperity. Are you looking for guidance on how to live a blessed and prosperous life? Do you want to learn how to trust in the Lord and find your joy in Him, rather than in the riches and success of the wicked? Then we invite you to watch our fascinating video on Psalm 37. In this video, we delve into the depths of Psalm 37, a beautiful psalm of wisdom and trust that teaches us how to attract richness and prosperity in our lives. Through exegesis, theology, and historical context, we uncover the secrets of this psalm and how it can transform your life. Join us as we explore the three parts of Psalm 37 and discover the characteristics of those who trust in the Lord, the nature of God and his relationship with his people, and the historical context in which this psalm was written. With powerful and attractive words, we offer a compelling invitation to viewers to join us in this journey of discovery and transformation. Don't miss out on this opportunity to learn from one of the most beautiful and powerful psalms in the Bible. Join us now and let Psalm 37 be your guide to a life of abundance, joy and prosperity. Watch our video today. Psalm 37. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath, do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just, and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow, to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. Into smoke they shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice, and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous, and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man, and observe the upright. For the future of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked, and save them, because they trust in him. Psalm 37 is a beautiful psalm of wisdom that
that provides guidance on how to live a blessed and prosperous life. It is attributed to King David, who wrote this psalm in his later years, imparting his wisdom to the next generation. This psalm contains 40 verses and can be divided into three parts. From a historical perspective, Psalm 37 was written during a time when Israel was surrounded by enemies and was facing political instability. It was a time when many Israelites were tempted to compromise their faith and follow the ways of the wicked in order to prosper. However, this psalm encourages the readers to remain faithful to God and to trust in his promises of prosperity and blessing. The first part, verses 1 to 11, urges the readers not to be envious of the wicked and not to fret over their success because their prosperity is fleeting. Instead, the psalmist encourages the readers to trust in the Lord and do good, for they will inherit the land and delight in the abundance of peace. Don't get worked up or jealous because of evildoers. It's a common problem, but it's wrong and harmful. Let events justify the action and trust in the Lord. It's foolish to be envious of the prosperity of others, whether they're godly or not, because God is the one who dispenses bounty. Any prosperity of the wicked is temporary, like the grass that withers quickly. Instead of envying them, we should view them with horror and aversion. The true test is found in time, as all apparent prosperity of the wicked is transient and perishes. Place your trust and find joy in the Lord. Trust in Him and do good. Stay in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Make a conscious effort to delight in the Lord, and He will grant you the desires of your heart. This means redirecting your emotions towards the blessings of God, withdrawing from earthly desires and fixing them on Him. By finding true delight in the Lord, your heart and desires will align with His will for your life, leading to a happy and satisfied life. This promise shows that God intends to fulfill the heart desires of His redeemed people, and by focusing on Him, we can leave aside worry and envy. By delighting ourselves in the Lord, He gives us more of Himself, and our longings are fulfilled. In Psalm 37 verse 5 to 6, David urges us to commit our ways to the Lord, trust in Him, and delight in Him. This means surrendering ourselves to God, finding peace and satisfaction in focusing on Him. Those who trust in God will see their desires fulfilled, and their righteousness will be revealed like the noonday sun. We should not fret or worry, but rather sit still and trust in the Lord, who will clear any slander against us and bring forth our righteousness for all to see, just as God said. Let there be light. And there was light. In Psalm 37 verse 7 to 8, David encourages us to find rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. This means trusting in God's promises and remaining silent instead of trying to defend ourselves. David also advises us to give up anger, wrath and worry as they only cause harm and are the opposite of delighting in the Lord and patiently waiting for Him. We should submit to God's will and avoid complaining or being jealous of others as anger in this context is like aggravated insanity. Psalm 37 verse 9 to 11 promises that those who trust in the Lord will inherit the earth, while evildoers will be cut off. David advises us to be patient and wait on the Lord, because the wicked's prosperity is short-lived, and soon they will be of no standing. In contrast, the meek shall inherit the earth and delight in the abundance of peace. Jesus quoted this psalm in the Sermon on the Mount, explaining that it unfolds the character of the meek or trusting person in the face of the apparent prosperity of the wicked. In the second part, verses 12 to 26, the psalmist describes the characteristics of those who trust in the Lord and follow his ways. They are upright, just and merciful, and they will be sustained by God. The psalmist reassures the readers that God will not forsake them and that he will protect them from their enemies and provide for their needs. Psalm 37 is a psalm of wisdom encouraging trust in God and patience in the face of wickedness. The psalmist contrasts the ultimate fate of the righteous with that of the wicked. In verses 12 to 15, the psalmist describes the wicked as plotting against the righteous, but God laughs at them and their schemes fail. In verses 16 to 17, the psalmist extols the virtues of humility and trust in God, stating that a little of the righteous person's possession is better than the riches of many wicked people. In verses 18 to 20, the psalmist notes that the inheritance of the upright is eternal, while the wicked will perish. In verses 21 to 22, the psalmist observes that the righteous give and show mercy, while the wicked borrow and do not repay. The ultimate reward for the righteous is that they will inherit the earth, while the wicked will be cut off. 
The psalm concludes by exhorting the reader to trust in God, avoid evil, and wait patiently for God to act. Psalm 37 speaks about the triumph of the godly and the passing of the wicked. The psalmist mentions the inevitable conflict between the wicked and the righteous. The wicked plot against the just, but God laughs at them, knowing their end. The wicked may draw their swords and bend their bows, but God protects his own, and their swords shall enter their own hearts, and their bows shall be broken. The psalmist advises the reader that the little a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked, as whatever the wicked has cannot last. The Lord upholds the righteous, and their inheritance shall be forever. The apparent reward of the wicked is temporary and fleeting, and their prosperity shall soon vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous show mercy and give. Those blessed by God shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The third part, verses 27 to 40, encourages the readers to turn away from evil and do good. The psalmist assures them that God rewards the righteous and punishes the wicked. He also reminds them that God is their stronghold and that he will help them in times of trouble. This third part of Psalm 37 demonstrates that Psalm 37 is a wisdom psalm that presents general principles for the righteous and their descendants. The psalmist, David, gives a testimony of God's blessing and care for those who trust in him and walk in his righteousness. David states that he has never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their descendants begging for bread. However, this statement is not intended to be taken as an absolute principle, but rather a general principle. The righteous are not only provided for by God, but are also generous and lend to others in need. The psalm also speaks of the promised reward for obedience. The righteous should depart from evil and do good, trust in God, and value moral instruction. The descendants of the wicked shall be cut off, but the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. From an exegetical perspective, Psalm 37 is a psalm of trust and wisdom that teaches its readers to trust in God, rather than in the riches and success of the wicked. It emphasizes that those who follow God's ways will be blessed and that their prosperity is not based on their own efforts, but on God's provision. From a theological perspective, Psalm 37 teaches us about the nature of God and his relationship with his people. It reminds us that God is just and merciful, and that he rewards the righteous and punishes the wicked. It also shows us that God cares for his people and provides for their needs as long as they trust in him and follow his ways. Let us pray with this Psalm 37 so that we be blessed by abundance and richness from God. Dear God, we come before you today with grateful hearts, acknowledging that you are the source of all blessing and prosperity. We declare your word in Psalm 37, which teaches us to trust in you and do good, and promises us that we will inherit the land and delight in the abundance of peace. We ask that you would help us to turn away from envy and fretting over the success of the wicked, and instead to trust in you and follow your ways. Help us to be upright, just and merciful, and to find our joy in you. We pray that you would bless the work of our hands and give us wisdom to make wise decisions that will lead us to financial abundance. We ask that you would protect us from our enemies and provide for our needs. Help us to be good stewards of the resources you have given us and to use them to bless others and advance your kingdom. We thank you for your faithful provision and for the blessings that you have already given us. We praise your name for your goodness and your mercy that endure forever. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And ring the bell to be notified of new videos available. To the next video.